Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a 3D printer that is affordable, easy to use, and also super fast. We're talking about up to 500 millimeters per second fast. That means that if you were to print a Benchy, that typically takes, let's say, one hour to print, you can get this guy printed in no more than 17 minutes. That's how fast. Uh, today we're talking about the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. And this is a very affordable clipper-based 3D printer that prints with great quality and crazy fast. Let's go ahead and check out the details. Now the Elgoo Neptune 4 Pro can print anywhere from 30 to 500 millimeters per second. You heard that right. And that is something that I found surprising, especially because this printer is a bed slinger still. This is not what we've seen like what you see from, let's say, Creality with the K1 or what you see from QD, where you see with their brand new printer, or I would say the printer that revolutionized this all, the Bamboo also, which is a totally different style, totally different type of printing. This printer with its size and also its design is able to print at really good quality at speeds that I would have never expected from a printer like this. The bed for this printer is 225 by 225 by 265 millimeters. It's using a, um, an intelligent segmented heat bed too, which is also unique for a printer of this type, which means that and a portion of the bed can be segmented so you're not heating up the entire bed. So if you have a small print, you're able to uh, heat a small section, which is gonna save power and it's gonna speed up um, how quickly the printer is ready to print. It also has a PEI magnetic sheet, right? Now that PEI magnetic sheet is gonna give you the ability to have a lot of different type of materials printed on it. Uh, one of the things that we also see change with this printer is that it has an all metal guide rail. So. Uh, in some of the printers, what you see is that the actual roller wheels themselves, over time, they wear. This is more similar to what we've seen in a lot of the laser engravers that are all metal with guide rails. And that's going to give you much more durability, and it's also going to give you much more stability. Now, it does have auto leveling, right? It could either be auxiliary or auto bed leveled, and it has 121 points that it actually levels. So that's gonna be something that's also fantastic. Now, while this printer comes with Kipler pre-installed, it's one of the simplest implementations, in my opinion, for someone who is a beginner to use a printer of this type and still take advantage of the fast printing. The nozzle is gonna heat up to 300 C, and that's gonna give you the ability to print a lot of different materials. The bed can go up to 110 C. So you're looking at PLA, PETG, ABS, TPU, and even some forms of nylon. So it's gonna give you a lot of flexibility because of how well or how hot both the nozzle and the bed can get. Now, while this printer does support auto bed leveling, you still have the adjustment screws to be able to level your bed for that auxiliary uh, leveling. And I always recommend that you do that. Here you have uh, tightening for your belt. You have um, two ways to be able to load USB-C and also USB-A. Uh, this is just a little connector that goes to the touch screen that you see there. And again, pretty straightforward bed. I do like that in the back here, the bed does have a real nice uh, heating core connector, right? And that's going to give you some longevity because most times when I've seen some printers that have come in, the reason why they fail is because of, or at least the heat bed is because uh, this doesn't have some really good support. This is really nice and sturdy. Uh, again, the PI sheet comes off really easily and it goes back on really nicely. I have been seeing more printers that are coming like with some little guide uh, screws at the very end so that when you bring it in, it kind of like snaps into place really easy. It would be nice to see that here. It just would help, you know, when you're placing um, the sheet there, but it's not a big deal. Now, the touchscreen itself is very responsive. I still have some glue that I haven't been able to remove from the sticker, uh, but a couple things that are going on here. First of all, you do have the ability to select uh, this screen here to go into print. Uh, you then also then have the prepare menu. This is going to allow you to move, you know, your Z. It's going to allow you to also uh, work with some things like um, adjusting your temperature, uh, going into your extruder to be able to change, again, filament if you need to. And you can notice here that you have, again, um, some speed settings, but obviously all these speed settings are going to be controlled via your uh, software as well. So movement's pretty straightforward. And one of the things that you're able to do really quickly in this screen is you're able to just choose what temper do you want the printer to uh, just jump up to? So you notice you have your PLA, ABS, PTG, and your TPU settings right here. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that temperature for this uh, printer goes up really fast. So notice how fast the temperature for the nozzle is coming up. So it's right now around 104 and climbing, and it's going to hit its max temperature uh, really, really fast. 
and then you'll see that the bed temperature will also rise. Now, in addition to uh, the areas that we saw there, you do have a settings area. This does have lights, which I really like. So if we go into this, you know, you can turn on the lights and it has two lights. It has one light that's gonna be on the bar itself and then one light that's on the printhead so you can see what's going on there. That's really nice. If it had a camera, that would be fantastic too because you'd be able to see things really closely. Over here, you have your fan controls. You do have your filament detector on or off. You do have about your machine and some advanced settings that you can play with. Um, because you're not connected via Wi-Fi, it doesn't have Wi-Fi capabilities. There's no way to update firmware wirelessly. Uh, you'd have to be connected in order to do that. In the level area here, we're not going to go into this. I already have it leveled. Don't want to mess it up. But you can go in here, and this is where you're going to be able to do your leveling, and it's going to create your mesh. And once you've done it, uh, you're pretty much set. Now, installing the filament is pretty simple. Uh, once you heat it to the right temperature, all you do is you press this down, insert your filament, and then you extrude it. Once it comes out, you're set to go. Now, uh, because it has these metal rails, this, this is super smooth. I really, really like this implementation. And the nice thing about it is since everything is metal, as you can see here, you don't have to worry about wheels wearing up or wearing out. So if you notice it right here, you do have still those uh, rubberized wheels. These are the area that you watch after time uh, with a lot of use. These tend to wear. But in reality, the movement that you have, your up and down movement, is far less than your left and right. So having this full metal just means that your, your printer is going to last a lot longer, and it's also going to reduce your maintenance, at least in my opinion. Now, one thing that you'll notice here in the very back is this massive fan. So this fan um, is a separate connector that comes in, and because of the high speeds, helps cool your filament as it's being laid on the bed. So this is something that I just leave it on, and then I just let the software determine if it needs to be used or not. But you can turn it on and off manually if that's something you'd like to do. Now on the side here, you have another knob that you can use for adjustment. So that's gonna uh, adjust again, um, tension for uh, this area. And at the very top here, what you'll see in a second is where you would see your LED light. Now on the top, you do have a filament sensor. You also have your filament spool at the very top. It doesn't seem like there's a way to relocate it. So it has to be in the top. So if you are gonna be um, placing this somewhere where you're concerned about height, just make sure that you account for that. You can notice here that the light is pretty bright. For whatever reason, my model has a flicker. Uh, it may be because it was an early model. I don't expect that you'll see that. And then when we uh, put our hand here at the very bottom, let's go ahead and pan down, you'll see that there is another light here. You can see the reflection here, but I'll put my hand here. It's pretty bright. So you're gonna be able to see what's going on on both sides. Now, one of the nice things about the interface is that you do get a preview of the print that you're gonna print. And you've noticed that timing, a 15 minute Benji. Can it print fast? This thing can print fast. And also, what's the quality like? What we're gonna do is we're gonna just hit confirm. We're gonna let it start printing. And you'll notice that you have the image of your Benchy here. Uh, you then have uh, how much time it's gonna take. And you'll get all the information around how the print um, is going. Temperature, um, the actual bed temperature, nozzle temperature, time. You, know, you can adjust some things like when it comes to speed. And what you're gonna see now is the overall uh, print experience. How, you know, it's gonna first come down to the bed, just probe the bed a couple times, and then it's gonna kick off. So we have been printing with uh, different materials. Uh, first of all, Elgu did provide me with some spools during this test, and they provided me uh, with this stuff right here, which is Elgu Rapid PLA Plus. I got a couple rolls on this that I've been testing. And I did, um, the white prints that you're gonna see in a second came from another roll of that material. Did extremely well. But what I also wanted to do is I wanted to print with non-high speed filament and just wanted to see what the experience is going to be like. So first of all, let's take a look at some of the prints that are on the file. So uh, this is a tool holder that we printed. And if we take a look at the overall quality, let's see if we can get that to be a little bit sharper for y'all. Uh, right there. Okay, much better. As you can see here, this came out really good. Uh, and again, we're talking about high speed. Uh, it does have you know a little bit of the brim there that I just didn't take off, but it did a nice job there. Now, the other thing that we printed, this bowl, and this bowl also, high speed, it did a really nice job with this one as well. You can see the inside, uh, and you can see this first layer, very, very, very clean first layer. Really, really like this first layer, and then you can see uh, the brim I'm still on this, but I can take that off, and this came out really, really nice, right? And I didn't see any layer shifts or anything like that. You notice that the printer is letting it or laying the first bead down. And I'm going to stay quiet for a second for you to hear. Look how quiet this is.
that is super quiet, especially for something that is printing this fast. Now, once the fan comes in, this guy right here, it's like a jet engine. That's the only part of this printer that makes this printer loud. But the first layer, the actual, there it goes. Now it feels like you have a jet in here. And I can actually feel all the way over here. If I had a sheet of paper, and I'll probably bring this over here so we can see. So you can see what's going on. You can see how this sheet of plastic is moving. All right? So we'll put it right here. That's because of the wind. It is blowing. All right? And But you could see how fast uh, that that printer is going now. And yeah, it's been able to hit 15 minutes. Now, what is the quality like? So I have some benches that I'll share with you. So here's the first benchy that we did. And I have to say, this looks pretty darn good. Take a look at that. That is pretty spectacular for something that was printed in 15 minutes. All right, first layer looks great, All right? And then everything else, even this thing right here, if you look at this angle right here, this one came out really nice. Everything came out great. I'd say that there was some detail here that was lost. So typically you have like some words here on the bed sheet that's not really visible at that speed, but still, nevertheless, everything came out great. Uh, tried it a couple times as well, just to see if it was repeatable. Here's a second benchy, same material. And the overall quality was spectacular. Now, wanted to do something larger, right? And this was a nine hour print, right? Uh, so take a look at this guy right here, right? This is Optimus Primal. And a couple things I'll notice on the print. Now, how this print uh, took place was like this. It was in this, right? So I had supports and the top, his nose is the actual top. His chin is the top. A couple things that I noticed during this print. Uh, you'll notice that there are some artifacts there. You can, you can see that as we get close up, right? Even on the chin right there. And there's some artifacts that you see right there. You see that for it. That could actually be better with more detail. Uh, if you look at the sides, though, the detail there is pretty good. If you look at the back, that's pretty good. And again, this was at the ha highest speed. I think this was a 9-hour print. Uh, typically, something like this would take so much longer. And this is, again with standard uh, filament, not something that is high speed, but just wanted to see what something like this would look like. Now, I do have also a base that we printed, and I did notice that we had, you know, some, some layer lines coming up. So in the front right there, this looks pretty good, right? Like you'll notice here some lining showing up, but we'll get that right there so you can see that. That's not bad, right? Here on the side though, that's where I saw something. Now, it could be, you know, some tweaking that I can do to clean that up. Uh, and you can see that right there. First layer, spectacular. And then uh, this was also printed in this fashion, right? So what I like about this is that this had no supports. And then look at how well that symbol came out, right? That came out really nice. So that's going to be connected to the base like this. And then that's what it looks like. So this is going to continue to print. And, um, and as we're doing this video, right now there are... There's a few minutes left, so it's 16% printed, right? And it's done a pretty good job. We're going to get a little bit closer in a second to take a look at this. But the question is, would I recommend this printer? Absolutely. And this is, even though it's pro in the name, I think this is a great printer for someone who wants ultra-fast printing, doesn't want to really tinker with Kipler, and, again, just wants it to work out of the box. This thing works out of the box. Very little to... To, to really build, all you have to do is put these two guys together, put the print head in, and, you know, just obviously do the connection for the wiring. But I'll say that it took me maybe 15 minutes, right? And I was not in a hurry to do it. I wasn't really timing myself to get this done. And we're going to go ahead and shift angle so you can see how nice this thing is doing. All right, here you can see the printer doing its thing in real time, and you can see how fast this printer is printing. And again, the, the, the noise that you're getting right now is due to the fan. But the printer itself, you know, the, the movement forward and back is relatively um, quiet. And if you're not going to be using this for high-speed printing, you can always reduce the fan. You're not going to hear. It's going to be almost, almost silent. Uh, but in this case, what I really like about this is that if you're looking to get fast prints out, if you're looking to do rapid prototyping, this thing works. And it works extremely well. And what I like is that it works straight out of the box. And I have to tell you, 
mine is probably one of the first off of the assembly. And I always, typically when I get the first versions, don't expect it to be 100%. Eventually what you will get when you purchase the printer is going to be um, more refined, right? There may be firmware updates, things, feedback that people like me will provide. But take a look at that Benji, right? And again, this is again using non-high speed filament. And this is the test. I wanted to see, you know, what the difference would be. And while I do see some slight layer lines in there, it's nothing significant. And so far, this print looks pretty good for something that's going on this fast. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.